A mountain rises above level ground. To find the height of the mountain, a surveyor measures the angle of elevation to the top of the mountain to be 24.63 degrees. All right, so let's just take that much. So we're told we have this, I don't know, maybe kind of weird mountain that rises above level ground. And we have a surveyor that measures an angle of elevation from a spot somewhere out here to the top to be 24.63 degrees. The surveyor then walks 100 feet closer to the mountain. And measures the angle of elevation again to be 25.05 degrees. So this picture is definitely not to scale because these angles are way too different to be 25 and a little smaller, a little larger than 25 respectively, but it'll work for our purposes. Um, how tall is the mountain? Round your answer to the nearest foot. So we're really looking for this height, and I see the roll, the level ground's doing here, right? Let's me draw that right angle there. And what I see are two different right triangles. A small right triangle here with a blue, green, and red side, and I can label that blue side X. And then I see a great big right triangle. And so in this little right triangle, I could think, well, the tangent of 25.05 degrees would be h over x. And I see two variables. If I knew any one of them, I'd be in good shape. And in the big triangle, what I see is that tangent of 24.63 degrees is equal to, well, this whole side on the bottom and still the height on the top because opposite over adjacent. And so what I really see here are two different equations, both with two variables. Because at the end of the day, the tangent of 25.05 is a number, and the tangent of 24.63 degrees is also just a number. I'm going to solve both of these equations for h and set them equal to each other, thinking about substitution as a method of solution here. So if I multiply both sides here by x, I get x times the tangent of 25.05 degrees is equal to h. I'm going to do the same thing here. And that's going to give me h is equal to x plus 100 in parentheses times the tangent of 24.63 degrees. All right, I'm going to set those two equations equal to each other because they're both equal to h. Another way to think about it is I'm substituting this in for h. I always like to think about this as setting two equations equal to each other. And on this side, as I go to write it down, I'm going to go on and distribute. And notice I'm just writing the tangent down. I know that's a number, but I don't want a decimal approximation right now because I only want to round at the end of my problem. All right, I'm going to get both of the terms with x's on the same side, and then we'll solve it from there. And again, just pushing around the symbols, letting that tangent of so many degrees in each part just carry along with the problem. All right, on this side, I can now factor out an x because my goal here is to actually figure out what x is. So I got the tangent of 25.05 degrees left here and the tangent of 24.63 degrees is equal to 100 tangent of 24.63 degrees. All right, so x I can find by dividing by this thing that's the difference. So x is equal to 100 tangent of 24.63 degrees all divided by the tangent of 25.05 degrees minus the tangent of 24.63 degrees. All right, this is where I'd like to run to my TI-83 for a moment and actually get a decimal approximation for x. Though, in a moment, I'm going to find the height of the mountain, and I'm going to use the unrounded figure, or at least however many decimal places my calculator is capable of remembering. So 100 times 
the tangent of 24.63 degrees, and I am in the rate, excuse me, the degree mode appropriately here, divide by, and in this older calculator, I need to remember to open that parenthesis for the bottom, tangent 25.05 degrees minus the tangent of 24.63 degrees, being very careful with those parentheses. And it turns out that X is really big. It's almost one whole mile, 5,150 and 0.6-ish. All right. And then I realized I wasn't even trying to find X, I'm trying to find H. Fortunately, that equation right there says if you know X, then H is easy to find. So I take my X, which if I just hit multiply, that's the last answer. That's what X was with more decimals than I, I'm willing to round to uh, written out. And now what I get is just to type in the tangent of 25.05 degrees. And I find out that H is approximately 2,407.2, and we've been asked to the nearest whole foot, so I'll just say 407 feet. All right, so that's the height of the mountain. And it might be rare to have a mountain that rises above level ground, but I'm making this video in North Carolina in the Piedmont Triad area in the foothills just east of where Pilot Mountain sits. And Pilot Mountain actually does rise out of nearly level ground, measuring to a height of 2,421 feet. Our mountain just a little bit shorter.